Today I'll be reviewing Adobe's new generative fill feature for Photoshop. This is currently only accessible in the beta version. This is a really exciting new tool that allows you to use artificial intelligence to add to, subtract from, or modify specific areas of an image. Lately, AI has been blowing my mind, but this feature takes it to a whole new level. While previous image generation techniques were limited by the rigidity of their output, now you can use AI to fix mistakes, refine, or better define your generated images. To give you a prime example, here is an image I generated from a text prompt using Dolly 2, a competitor of Adobe. The result is pretty neat, but there are many obvious flaws. I tried my best to fix the image and make it look more complete using Photoshop, but this was almost six months ago before the generative fill feature. I used the healing brush, smudge, content aware fill, and good old fashioned hand painting to get this result. It still looks pretty crappy though. I'd prefer the hand to be metallic, but that would have been very difficult six months ago. Now it's as easy as selecting the hand and giving the right prompt. Photoshop matches the hand pose, corrects it, and makes it look how I want. Even the phone surrounding the hand has been improved. This is f***ing amazing. With a little more work, I can add in other details that were missing, like a phone cord and mouth and earpieces. I can also correct the neck and add a metallic humanoid ear. Even the eyes and mouth can be changed individually. If I'm going too fast, don't worry. I'll walk you through how to use this tool shortly. How about a background? Generative Phil can do that too. I can even build upon the background to make it even more elaborate. With a few finishing touches, I have generated an image that is much more effective without as many glaring mistakes. That's not to mention that I had a lot more input this time around and I didn't have to settle for less. Best of all, this is built into Photoshop. I don't have to rely on a separate website to export and import generated images. This is very convenient. Generative Fill is powered by Adobe's Firefly technology. It uses a cloud-based AI model to analyze the image along with the area you've selected, then generates new content that matches the style, color, lighting, and other properties of the image. You can use text prompts to tell the AI what you want it to generate. For example, here's a photo I took of the ocean. I can select an area using the lasso or other selection tools and say, woman in a red dress looking at the ocean. For the best results, the selection you make needs to be in context. For example, adding a person to this scene requires enough of a selection to fit their body in the scene. Obviously, where you place the selection matters too. It wouldn't make sense to have them floating in the air. Once I click on Generate, it will take some time to process. After that, I'm presented with three variations to choose from. I can't describe how impressive this is. If these results aren't satisfactory, then I can click on Generate again. Don't worry if your first few images look like garbage, that's normal. Feel free to click this dislike button if there is something that you don't like. It will help train the AI to produce better results. It may be necessary to make a different selection shape, use a different selection tool, or reword my text prompt to get the result I want. For example, I might want to specify hair color, age, or some other attribute of this character. I may even need to make multiple selections and build up layers a little at a time to correct just the areas that need work. For example, parts of this image are great, but some of the anatomy is wrong. Sometimes that is able to be corrected and sometimes it is not. Again, if I'm trying to change the arm, the selection needs more than enough room to fit that in. It's up to you to decide how much time you want to invest in refining these images. It's sort of a roll of the dice, and it could take three tries or 300 tries to get what you want. And don't forget that you can use the old school Photoshop tools to clean up this image as well. Prompts are saved with special generative layers, including the alternate variations. You can even edit the prompt and the layer will update. Next, I'll add a lighthouse in the distance. Each generative layer has a layer mask, so I can use that to conceal some of the layer. That looks pretty good. Now I have a mixture of a real photograph and generated images that creates a complete scene. I've turned an ordinary vacation photo into something more. Sure, the anatomy is still not 100% accurate, so I wouldn't be able to pass this off as professional work. But as concept art or a reference image for painting, this is more than adequate. 
As you have seen, Generative Fill does an exceptional job of matching lighting, color, and focus. But what else can it do? We've added subjects to a background, but we can also add a background behind a subject. You will of course need a subject that has been isolated from the background onto a layer. You can do this using the Remove Background command. Or for a more complex background removal, use the Object Selection tool and then add a layer mask. In any case, the background is what needs to be selected, not the subject. I'll add storefronts at night with neon lights as my prompt. As you can see, I am instantly transported into a new place. This is such a powerful feature. How about an art gallery? Or maybe a vintage kitchen? I especially like how the background is properly out of focus. Again, all of these variations are saved with a layer, so I can toggle between them until I decide what I will choose for the final version. Just like the human anatomy I generated, these backgrounds will have flaws too. You can correct them in the same way using more generative layers or other Photoshop tools. The lighting is pretty good, but I have a purple color cast that isn't always being matched by the background. I may need to add a mention of the purple lighting into my prompt in order to get that, but I think you get the idea. Let's change the background to bedroom with white walls. What I want is a wall that has an obvious perspective. This one will work. Let's add a framed picture to the wall by making a rectangular selection and then using the prompt framed painting of flowers. As you can see, Photoshop can fit objects into perspective even if the selection itself is not in perspective. Another way to use this feature is to extend the edges of an image to make it taller or wider. I have a lot of images I generated with Dolly 2 that are cut off. Now I can easily fill in those missing areas using Generative Fill. I'll use the Crop tool to extend the canvas to the left. Then I will select the blank area with a bit of overlap. Next, rather than give a prompt, I'll just leave it blank. Like magic, I get the rest of the banana and the hand surrounded by the background color. I can repeat that to show the top of the head as well. As you are just eliminating blank space by filling it with something else, a blank prompt works well to remove objects or subjects. I'll remove this pesky squirrel who is always getting into my bird feeder. Content Aware Fill used to be really impressive, but now it looks like a joke compared to Generative Fill. While we're here, let's just make this squirrel eating a banana. As you can see, I get a tiny banana, but maybe I want the peel to be hanging down. To give a little more context to Firefly, I can indicate the peel by adding it to my selection. In a sense, I am kind of drawing the silhouette I want. Sure enough, I get a banana with a peel hanging down. Rather than draw complex selections like this, you can also use the Object Selection Tool or other selection tools to capture a selection of an object and use that as your guide. Next, let's see if Firefly can generate images without any background image to reference. In other words, can I generate an image on a blank canvas? I'll make a rectangular selection and choose Green Frog. And I get a really nice looking frog. If I hide the background layer, you can see that white surrounds the frog. I can rasterize the layer and remove the background, but some of the frog is cut off. I can, of course, manually correct the selection, but let's try generating the frog again on a different background to see if it makes it easier to isolate. Indeed it does! So I would recommend starting with a background color that contrasts with your subject if you plan to generate subjects this way. Now, to create a background for the frog, you can either select the entire canvas and generate a background beneath the frog layer. This might not capture the context of the frog, though. Or you can select the frog, invert the selection, then generate the background beneath the frog. This gives a better result because Firefly considers the frog's position and perspective. If you notice a bit of edge surrounding your subject, you may want to move the background above the subject, or use a blank prompt to fill in the frog-shaped hole in the background, then refine the layer mask of the subject. A little feathering helps to blend the subject in. And in this case, a drop shadow is necessary to fit the subject into the scene. Being able to generate images from scratch within Photoshop is incredibly powerful. However, as with human anatomy, you may find there are imperfections in other types of animals. This frog might be a mashup of several different species, so I wouldn't use it for any sort of educational purpose. How about correcting faces with generative fill? I'll make a selection of my mouth and try smiling face. It looks goofy, but it worked. 
Let's try it on a face with even worse anatomy like this one generated by AI. The results can often be completely wrong or out of proportion, but a lot of the time the changes fit. Rather than manipulating the entire head or face, try starting with just the eyes, nose, or mouth. You may get better results that way. Hands are notoriously difficult to generate, so how does Firefly handle those? Again, the results are not perfect, but they're significantly better than the hands I got from Dolly 2. On that note, if I were using the outpainting feature in Dolly 2 to try to make these corrections, they wouldn't work nearly as well, and I'd have to pay per attempt. Firefly is included in my Creative Cloud subscription, so there's no financial risk in taking the time to refine your images. I'm seeing less and less reason to bother with Dolly 2, and I have a feeling Firefly will soon become the top choice in image generators. The other hand, holding the stylus is a little more tricky. It's difficult to generate the stylus, and sometimes Firefly confuses the arm for the woman's and faces the hand the wrong direction. I may need to work on the background a bit first by making him drawing on paper. This is a huge improvement that takes the image from basically unusable to something that might actually work. As you've seen, working with photos or photorealistic images works well. But how about working with art? Is it possible to add to, subtract from, and manipulate illustrations? If I try to change the sky in this landscape painting, I don't have much success. The generated content spills outside of the selection and ruins the painting. I certainly could use this as inspiration and paint the details myself, but as is, this is no good. The results aren't as bad if I try to remove something, though sometimes I might get a hole or some artifacts that don't belong. How about a simpler drawing? If I try to replace the head, a decent attempt is made to match my style, but it looks very sloppy. Again, this is more than sufficient for generating ideas. I can try out a lot of different heads, then draw the final version of the one I want. Let's try closing the mouth to see if that's possible. Nope. I don't know what's going on here. Let's try closing the eye. That doesn't seem to work either. In fact, the eyes generated are open. Artists are freaking out about AI-generated images because they worry their industry will become obsolete. I've already shared my opinion on that in other videos about AI, but let's see how generative fill changes things. I'll start with a blank canvas and choose watercolor graveyard painting. I get a pretty decent watercolor painting, but it needs a subject. I'll create a tall selection, then enter watercolor woman in a red dress standing in a graveyard. I'm amazed that the subject is generated in the same style as the background. She needs some work, so I will generate layers for her face and hand. I have to admit, this isn't the same as entering a prompt and just accepting the results. This actually allows me to construct a painting. Are there flaws that a trained eye might pick out? Sure. But to the average person, this could be indistinguishable from a real watercolor painting. Given these new advances, I'd say it is much easier to create art using AI. But that doesn't mean artists who don't use AI are going to become obsolete. In fact, it empowers those of us who enjoy the painting process to accomplish more. For example, rather than having to arrange for a model to pose in a graveyard for me, I can generate a reference image the way I like. And as with a standard photo reference, I don't have to copy it exactly. So as an artist, I am excited by this, not threatened. It would be very difficult to provide artist services and be 100% dependent on AI to generate work for you. Few artists are self-indulgent and can make a living doing only what they want. Just because you can make art doesn't mean you'll be given an art exhibition. It doesn't mean you'll sell your art. Artists who are successful are that way because of additional factors. That's not to mention that it's still quite challenging to generate anything with a high degree of intention. I can generate an oil painting of a country road, but when I try to put a man riding a horse on it, it doesn't match my vision of the pose and perspective. I could spend months trying to generate the right subject, but in the end it might be easier just to learn how to paint it digitally or traditionally. And let's not forget that clients aren't going to pay much for an image they can generate themselves. If you don't have a creative process that demonstrates a considerable amount of effort or passion, you aren't going to impress anyone. If I remove the horse and just try selling this as is, I'm going to have a lot of competition from other AI-generated paintings. The market is going to be oversaturated until the hype dies down, and then only the most impressive AI-generated art will survive. There are already methods and standards that distinguish AI-generated works from art made using other techniques, 
So I think AI-generated art will have its own space and will not really intrude much on other types of art. For example, there are still artists who use traditional oil paints rather than acrylics or even digital paint. And there are still people buying oil paintings. Now that we have a grasp on what we can do with generative fills, let's explore some of what we can't do. First, the image generation is happening in the cloud, so you will need an internet connection to use this feature. That also means that your image and prompt information is being exchanged with Adobe servers. On that note, the terms of service disallow certain kinds of prompts, so you may not be able to get certain types of image elements, even if they are harmless. Also, certain types of prompts just don't work. For example, try as I may, I just cannot create a robot sideburn to tie this image together. You need to up your sideburn game, Adobe. Because the background of generated images attempts to blend into the surroundings, it's best to work from background to foreground unless you're able to remove the background from each generative layer. Hopefully that's a feature Adobe will add later on. Generative backgrounds can also interfere when you try to adjust color or brightness of a subject. As we looked at earlier, the selection tools can help to isolate objects from the background. And the final limitation isn't necessarily with Firefly, it involves the user. Sometimes your prompts need to be very specific to get what you want. You might not be able to express that vision as words in a prompt. Or perhaps you're using a combination of words that don't trigger the right output, but a slightly different way of saying it might. In just under six months, Adobe has seriously leveled up AI image generation. The results of generative fill can be really impressive. In some cases, it's hard to tell that the image has been edited at all since the AI does a great job of matching the style and lighting of the original image. The images are still plagued with flaws in anatomy and other details, but I'm sure in another six months, even that won't be an issue any longer. I think it's really cool that we can build images this easily, but we must also remember to be more critical about what we see and hear from now on since there will be people who misuse this technology. If you're a Photoshop user, I highly recommend giving this feature a try. I hope you found this review helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content creation tutorials and reviews. Thanks for watching and stay creative.